Hi everybody, Neil from Knack Training here bringing you another everyday office video. In today's video, I want to use just a fundamental principle in Excel to help you to work more quickly and more effectively. So um, I'm a big fan of saying, you know, basically everybody at some point has a big list in their business, whatever their business happens to be. You can see here that um, this list of information is the revenue that we're generating at our company. Now, what's important to note here is that this big list could be literally any piece of data at all. It could be our employees, it could be our customers, it could be our sales like you see here. But ultimately, what's important about this is to be able to get information out of it because this is just the storage of that information. So if, for example, I were to make a new sheet, let's call this sheet uh, calculations. And on this sheet, I decided that I wanted to have things like the total revenue, the total costs, and then ultimately to be able to generate the total profit. It seems perfectly reasonable. This is just a little table that I decide to make that needs to be able to add up all the revenues, add up all the costs, etc. Now the problem is that if I did equal sign sum for the total revenue, went over to the revenue list over here, and came over here to the side, I could highlight literally every cell in here, which is all the way down to 6,781, but I wouldn't be guaranteed that at some point or another, that data wouldn't go down to our 7,119. So being able to turn a simple reference like this one that's pointed at individual cells into a dynamic reference that grows and shrinks as the different sets of values change, that's going to be critical. So what I do to make that happen is I turn the original list of data into what Microsoft Excel considers to be a table. Now you might have already called this a table, but it's very important to note that tables are a specific tool in Excel 2010 through 16. If you click on a data set like this one and you go to the insert tab at the top of your screen, you'll notice the third button from the left is table. When I click on the table, it says, hey, I see here that you've got a big set of data from A3 through R6781. Does your table have headers? Are there labels up at the tops? Yes. And I'll click OK. Now instantly you can see that they've added this colored um, alternating row color. Um, but you can go now to the design tab. Notice the design tab up here at the top of the screen is now available to us. And over here on the right we can go to table styles and apply whatever table style makes us happy. Okay, so we've chosen a table style. Now what does it really do for us to turn this into a table? We look at the design tab at the top of the screen and we notice there's a text box all the way over here on the far left hand side for the table's name. And currently it's just called table 1. Now if I give this a better name because table 1 doesn't mean anything to anybody, that might be something like uh, TBL Revenue. Right? And so when I go and I look at the name TBL Revenue, I know it's the table that has the revenue in it. That makes a lot of sense to me. Now here's what's most important about this. If I go back over to the Calculations tab and I do exactly the same thing I did before, equal sign sum, and I go over to the Revenue table and I highlight from the first bit of revenue to the last one, Let's take a look at what that calculation looks like now. You can see that instead of referencing the sheet that it was on, the ROG revenue sheet, instead of referencing the cells that it's in, we instead just say, oh yeah, there's this table called TBL revenue. And in the TBL revenue column, there's a col in the TBL revenue table, there's a column called revenue. That's it. Add that up. And what the benefit is there is, as you can see here, the revenue is currently $1.1 billion, right? So if I go to the bottom of this table and I add a new row down here and I say that <clears throat> something generates for us $500 million in revenue, OK? 
okay? So I just put $500 million right down there in the corner, tacked it onto my table. Instantly, when I go over to my calculations, instead of $1.1 billion, I now see it's $1.6 billion. That reference is dynamic. And for that matter, if I get rid of the $500 million and I take this little corner down here, you see this, put my mouse over it and pull it back up. Now I'm shortening up the table and you can see I'm right back to having $1.1 billion worth of revenue. And in t on top of that, if I go equal sign sum for costs, right? And I do TBL revenue, Oh, look at that. TBL revenue is right there on the drop down menu. I can hit the tab key to choose that table. And then if I open the square brackets, it says, yeah, what would you like to add up? Are we talking about sale price, maintenance costs, acquisition costs? Oh, that's good. Okay. So how about we do acquisition costs, close the square brackets, oops, acquisition cost, close the square brackets, comma, TBL revenue, open the square brackets, maintenance costs, close the square brackets. You see how easy that is to read as somebody who comes to this uh, sheet later on down the line, we say, oh, oh, okay, so we're going to this table and grabbing all the acquisition costs and adding those up and adding all the maintenance costs. And sure enough, we can see there, okay, so that's half a, uh, what, half a billion dollars in costs. If I go here to the ROG Revenue tab, watch what I can do here. If I go to the Design tab up here at the top of the screen and add a total row, so there's a new row down here at the bottom, and it tells me that the total revenue, as you can see, is that $1.1 billion. But on top of that, let's say I go to Maintenance Costs, and I hit the drop-down menu and say, find the sum of the maintenance costs, and go to the Acquisition Costs and say, find the sum of the acquisition costs, you see here acquisition costs come to $485 million. Maintenance costs comes to $9.6 million. So 485, or actually 486 million plus 10 million, $495 million. That's exactly what we got. So just like that, we're able to calculate these values without going over and figuring out what cells they're in and without ever having to update the cells that we're talking about. Because by calling upon this by its name, we're making a dynamic reference to all the acquisition costs and all the maintenance costs.